94, which has, I believe, already entered our waters, um, and we have urgent updates regarding it, so I will not hold us up. I will immediately bring to the podium from the Met Department, Acting di sorry, Director Jeffrey Simmons. Good afternoon. At 5 p.m. this afternoon, well, for the past several days, we have been following um, in a tropical with strong tropical wave as it moved across the Atlantic into the, into the, the Leeward Islands and the Caribbean and eventually into the Bahamas. And this, we, we've been issuing reports on these for the past few days, and that was known as Invest 94L. So at 5 p.m. this afternoon, looking at our radar imagery along with satellite imagery and other observations, um, we realized that Invest 94L was gradually organizing and becoming, a, you've seen signs of a low level circulation near eastern Cuba. So although this system has not meet the criteria of a tropical cyclone as yet, is expected to become one during the next day or two and affect portions of the central Bahamas and the northwest Bahamas. So as we, are, um, as we, we would, would usually do, we issue a tropical storm, a tropical storm warning for the central Bahamas, and a tropical storm watch for the northwest Bahamas. With the fact that this system will become a tropical depression sometime on Saturday, and eventually a tropical storm on Sunday, and move through the central and northwest Bahamas. So the system right now is moving toward the northwest, near nine miles per hour. And a north-northwest motion is expected to, to continue for the next two days. The maximum sustainment right now is only 35 miles per hour. And some gradual strengthening. And the system is expected to become a tropical depression on Saturday and a tropical storm on Saturday night or Sunday. So residents in the central Bahamas should begin maybe asking residents in the central Bahamas to make preparation for the possibility of tropical storm force winds that could be impacting them within the next um, 36 hours. So those islands include San Salvador, Rumkey, Cat Island, Exumas, and Long Island. And for the Northwest Bahamas, we are asking residents in those islands to begin preparation for tropical storm conditions um, that could impact them sometime on Sunday. So they include the, island of Ilu the islands of Eleuthera, New Providence, Grand Bahama, Abaco, and um, the Berry Islands. Because we expect the system to stay more on the eastern side of the country, we don't expect uh, much activity to be happening in places like Andros and Bimini. So we expect the system, like I said, to move forward and be out of, the, of our area um, sometime on Monday. Strengthening the system could become a hurricane, and that we, we don't expect to take place until the system is actually out of the Bahamas, moving toward the southeast coast of the United States. Thank you. We'll hold questions. We'll hold questions until the end, if that's okay. We'll be very brief. Um, I now invite Minister Lundy, Minister Leon Lundy, um, with responsibility for disaster risk management from the OPM. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, the realities of our geography are before us again. Threats come with the beauty of these islands, the price we pay for paradise, but we do not face them unprepared. As you have just heard from the Department of Meteorology, Tropical disturbance AL-94 is expected to strengthen into a tropical storm as it moves through the Bahamas over the next coming days. I will not repeat the technical details of the forecast, but I want to take this opportunity to speak directly to the Bahamian people about our national readiness. Since Wednesday and throughout the day-to-day, -day, I have been in meetings with the Disaster Risk Management Authority and the Med Department, receiving continuous briefings. I can state with confidence that both agencies are fully mobilized and ready to respond. While there has been some uncertainty in the storm's development and strength, the government has not waited to act. We have been prepared behind the scenes for all contingencies. Now, with a clearer picture of its projected path and risks, we are moving swiftly 
to ensure that the nation is positioned to respond effectively. I have held briefings with the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, and my Cabinet and Parliamentary colleagues who remain engaged in the national response. I have also spoken directly with the Minister for Grand Bahama on the state of readiness and members of Parliament for both Abaco and Grand Bahama from all sides of the aisle, and they have all been informed. Because when it comes to preparedness, it is not about politics. It is about safeguarding every human life. A key part of this preparation is coordination with the Ministry of Works. Minister Sweeting and his team have already deployed crews and assets to address the areas most vulnerable to flooding. This is critical work. If the system strengthens, our greatest threat will be intense rainfall and significant flooding. Drainage pumps and flood mitigation resources are being positioned right now to reduce those impacts. But government action alone is not enough. We need everyone to play their part. I am speaking to all residents on every island. Complete your preparations now. Secure your homes, check on your neighbors, and make sure your families are ready. Reliable guidance is available at our website, getready.gov.bs. And I cannot stress these two points. Please rely on information issued by the Department of Met, the DRM Authority, or trusted official news sources. And please heed any evacuation orders issued by authorities. As we face this system, let me reassure you, the government is fully engaged. Our agencies are prepared and our focus is unwavering. Preparedness is just not the responsibility of the government. It is the responsibility of the whole country. If each of us does our part, government, communities, and families together, we will weather this storm safely and in unity. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for those uh, words of reassurance. Um, and our final speaker today is MD, uh, sorry, Managing Director Aaron Sargent, who will bring updates on the government's preparedness. Uh, good evening, Bahamas, uh, members of the media press who are here today. Thank you. Um, as the director for the meteorology uh, department and minister of alluded to, um, there has been a tropical storm warning uh, issued for the central Bahamas and watch for the north, northwestern Bahamas. Um, as we can tell from these forecasts, we're expecting some broad impacts across the islands as the system progresses. Um, as we know, the system has not fully developed as yet or formed, and there's uncertainty about the development strength, uh, which is why we are here, and I echo the sentiments of Minister, which is to prepare now. I know a number of calls came in today as to when should we prepare. The time is now, uh, as we've been encouraging from the beginning of the hurricane season. As uh, this uh, disturbance moves in, into our waters um, at this time, um, rapid intensification and strengthening can occur. And so uh, while we have uh, a moment to prepare, please take the time to review all of your plans. Your, your, and as Minister alluded to, um, disaster management pre preparation is not just a government task. It's a whole of country approach so that we can protect ourselves and be resilient. From the authorities' uh, perspective, we have done our uh, preparatory checks um, over the course of this week. We've conducted our communications tests, uh, in particular with the SAT phones. I'm happy to note uh, one of the key things that we have been able to complete this year through the support of the U.S. Northern Command uh, is the procurement of SAT phones, uh, new SAT satellite phones for all of the uh, administrators in the family islands. And those were tested today and are fully operational, which would allow administrators to stay in contact to provide us with situational awareness uh, should the need arise if commercial networks fail. Um, Family Island Incident Command Centers have completed their readiness checks and are prepared uh, to play their role uh, in response. Um, additionally, as Minister alluded to, we, we've been briefing administrators over the last uh, 72 hours. Administrators have been on calls on multiple briefings with us to determine any challenges that may have arise. At this stage, uh, there has not been a need to activate shelters. However, shelters on the islands are under alert and watch and stand ready to open should conditions require it. 
Our residents are encouraged, encouraged to identify the nearest shelters now and visit getready.gov.bs for the updated uh, shelter listing, the 2025 shelter listing, and for preparedness guidance. Relief supplies, including TARP, over the last few days we have been uh, mobilizing and pre-positioning TARP uh, as we, this uh, disturbance is expected to bring uh, a, a lot of down, uh, rainfall. And so we have uh, pre-positioned TARP to various islands where we expect rainfall to be the greatest, um, in, uh, where we expect it to be the greatest. In terms of evacuation planning, um, we, the authority met with the administrators uh, to develop evacuation contingencies, in particular um, East Grand Bahama and parts of Abaco, where there may be challenges for residents uh, who may be in low-lying areas, and we're working to develop and finalize our plans. The administrators have pressed to uh, put in place all of the necessary transport logistics components of being able to mass move uh, individuals. I'd like to say and echo the sentiments of Minister. If you do not heed the evacuation order, first responders will not be placed at risk to rescue you until the all clear is given. I repeat, if you see or receive an evacuation order from the authority, um, we, we will not put first responders at risk for, uh, to rescue until the all clear is given. By refusing to evacuate, you may cut yourself off from assistance when you need it most. Flooding and uh, flooding preparedness, um, as we discussed earlier, uh, heavy rainfall is expected to be the main hazard. Uh, we are in close coordination with the Ministry of Works, who have mobilized their teams throughout the family islands and engage contractors for the necessary uh, remediation work to uh, drainage. Uh, crews are already clearing them uh, as we speak in flood uh, prone areas uh, to reduce risk and anticipation of rainfall as this, the system will bring. Uh, from a national coordination perspective, the National Disaster Emergency Operations Center uh, will partially activate uh, tomorrow, Saturday, 20, um, September 27th at 8 a.m., along with the incident command centers in all of the affected uh, islands uh, where there will, is a tropical storm watch or warning. Members of relevant emergency support functions have been contacted and notified to report to the NDEOC. Uh, this is, ensures that all critical sectors, health, security, public works, and social services, utilities, and others are in place to provide a unified response uh, if the situation escalates. Again, um, you can find uh, the hotline or emergency numbers on our website, getready.gov.bs. But in case you may not be aware, uh, to reach the authority via from the Family Islands only, 322-6731 um, or 322-6081 or 322-6085. In order to reach the Department of Social Services, their national hotline, which is 24 hours, 322-2763-422-2763. You can also, again, visit uh, getready.gov.bs for any um, preparedness information that you would need. Uh, in closing, the DRM Authority and its partners are fully engaged and prepared, but public readiness is equally important. Complete your household preparations, check on your neighbors, have a plan for shelter and evacuation if needed. Again, we echo the sentiments, do not wait, get storm ready. Stay tuned to official updates and visit getready.gov.bs for reliable preparedness guidance. Thank you. Thank you so much, Managing Director Sargent. And I just want to echo uh, what he said, that a tropical watch is now in effect for northwestern Bahamas, and a tropical warning is now in effect for central Bahamas. Um, as you know, we are utilizing the disaster alert system, similar to the Marco alert system, so people should watch to their phones to receive those within the next hour. And also, he mentioned evacuations. You should expect to get, in the events that there is evacuations in any areas, you should expect expect to get those directly to your phones via that same alert system. So we urge people not just to be watching our socials and the official media like yourselves, but also to be watching their phones for this, these important updates. Uh, with that said, um, I will open it up to questions. I think that we'll um, uh, ask for questions directed to Managing Director Sargent first, um, so that we can have all of them at once. Just for clarity, South Bahamas is being impacted. And you guys had a warning is in place for central bombs. So that's directed to uh, Simmons. Um, it's just no. Please. Come up to the mic, please, Dr. Simmons. In that case, please direct all of your questions for Director Simmons all at once. 
Okay, no, we didn't put in anything for the southwest, but right the the wave itself moved into the southeast Bahamas. So today they are getting a lot of rain, heavy rain, thunderstorms in islands like in in Agua, Maguana, and Auckland and those. Um, we don't expect the system to, to actually become a tropical storm until it's out of the southeast Bahamas. Once that happens, I know um, you all spoke about rain, but what other conditions can people expect, especially considering I know people have events going on, church on Sunday, things happening, should they um, deviate from their usual weekend plans given the forecast? Well, this this would be something that would cause persons to TV from the weekend plans. Um, on Sunday, we, we actually, that's when we really expect the system to become a, a tropical storm by Sunday, and it would be in the area of um, Eleuthera and New Providence and moving into Abaco and, and Grand Bahama. So those islanders, you would advise them to probably sh shelter in versus church and other normal things that would happen. Yeah, it would be because, well, we, we expect heavy showers and thunderstorms on those days. Uh, this will be also expect wind speeds, you know, winds up to like 40, 50 miles per hour winds. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions for Director Simmons? Any questions for Managing Director Sargent? Um, you, you mentioned um, that shelters and are ready to be activated if necessary. Mm -hmm. um, are you able to speak to, I guess, will residents have the sufficient time to be able to move if that comes to that, especially those like you who would maybe experience a tropical storm? Yeah. Yes, we are making determinations this evening uh, in terms of the activations of shelters where needed um, if uh, to give residents enough time to move from uh, low-lying areas. So yes, they, they, we will provide them with enough time for a movement of people. Uh, like I said earlier, the administrators are uh, working assiduously behind the scenes to uh, develop their evacuation plans. And so if need be, uh, you don't have the logistics to move, they, we will uh, find uh, avenues through the administrator's office to uh, relocate individuals to uh, safer shelters and uh, safer um, uh, facilities. Okay. Um, additionally, I'd just like to close by saying again, pay attention to the alerts. Evacuation orders will be given through the national alert system uh, through, via SMS, via our socials, uh, via the, you, the media. Um, so pay attention to those evacuation orders uh, and any other updates that the Met Office will provide as it relates to the movement and activation of shelters. Additionally, administrators will hit the ground running. They already have hit the ground running in terms of their local communities and uh, sharing information as uh, they operate. So please stay tuned to all of those channels to uh, keep yourselves informed. Are there any additional questions? If there are no additional questions, then I'll bring the press conference to a close. I want to say thank you to all of our speakers um, for your work. Thank you to everyone um, in the NDOC and all of the Family Island administrators and everyone who was involved in uh, getting us ready today. There has been a lot of work behind the scenes and there will continue to be a lot of work to ensure that the country is ready for AL94 as it develops. And I also want to thank the media. You are a crucial part of the ecosystem that keeps people informed during this time, which is important. So thank you and Bahamas, stay safe, get ready. Thank you. Good night.